Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan. I'm the Jazz Shepherd. Welcome to this channel. We talk jazz, and we talk real. Uh, we talk social, political, historical contexts of jazz. And we've been doing a cool series on a look into different labels, how to build a library from each label. We're going to get back to that this week. I think I'm going to do Prestige next, which is a pretty incredibly huge volume of work. Where do you start? But uh, today I want to discuss something that's on my mind, and it's something that just kind of annoys me, and it's the misconceptions of jazz, and the, the, the public in general have two misconceptions of this music that prevails across genders and race and age. And I find it frustrating. I find it just so frustrating. And I find the vinyl community, especially some of the jazz snobs, are really culpable in this regard. The two, and I get this when I DJ playing a lot of jazz in lounges and clubs, I get these comments from people about what their perceptions of what jazz was and what I'm playing for them, how different that was. And there's two very common misconceptions of what jazz is. The first one is it's sterile. Elevator music, easy listening. Uh, and there's a slew of 80s jazz records and 70s jazz records as well. Uh, even CTI merges in this direction that is new agey, easy listening. Uh, there's a ton of piano. Uh, guitar, jazz from that era. It's so sterile. The water isn't moving. It's just a guy that can play. But it's spiritless. It's soulless. It's blues free. It just has no guts to it. And it's, it's pablum. It's nauseating. It's awful. And so much of that music that doesn't have a current to it has somehow become such a popular misconception of what jazz is. Oh, it's something you hear in an elevator. Uh, how do we get so far removed from the true source of this music? The blues and swing and a driving propulsed celebration of life. That easy listening, schmaltzy, I'm an omnipotent player, listen to how fantastic I am. I can drop a Pregios and put third minor scale. Like it's, it's nauseating to think that that's what jazz was supposed to be ever. And that the people who have that misconception are so misguided. And there's such a common perception of that. And yet, jazz is this. This tone poet, uh, Hank Mobley record. I've talked about this one once before. But I felt it was a great record to illustrate kind of what I'm talking about. The brilliant vivacity, the swing. You can tap your head, not tap a foot, nod your head to it. It's not sterile. It's not boring. It's not a stream without a current and a pond that's just sitting there becoming funky. Ew. And yet there's so much jazz out there that people believe that this is what jazz is. Easy listening bordering on new age, infantile, noodling by some virtuoso who's showing us how sophisticated and modern his take on the classics are. I, yuck, yuck. I flush those records out of my collection when I find them. Just, I, no, I have no place for them, no time for them, and people that's not jazz. It's a watered-down facsimile. Kanye West is more hip-hop than that shit is jazz. Number two, the other misconception that I get from people all the time is that for it to be jazz, it's got to be difficult to listen to. And this is where the avant-garde collectors really tick my box because they've so elevated the place of what was always a peripheral part of the music in part because of the collectible nature of these records that are rare 
and they're rare for a reason because they didn't sell. And yet somehow, some guy with a screeching saxophone has slipped into the mainstream consciousness to a lot of people as what jazz is. It's defamation. It's, you couldn't be trying harder to keep something from having an audience. It's like the whole middle of the road's been blown up. And the, there's a perception in the common man that jazz is either easy listening sidewalk garbage or this dissonant shrill of a man's cacophonic soul that's unlistenable. And that jazz is that. It's difficult. It's not fun. It's complicated. It's mathematics. It's so sophisticated. and It's none of those things. And you'll never find a black record by real black jazz men that's sterile. It will swing. It will propulse. It will move you. That sterile pablum that's been spoon-fed to people ain't got nothing to do with jazz. It's doing a disservice and a discredit to this noble art form. And a lot of that avant-garde free jazz stuff that, again, has such a large shadow over what people's perception of jazz is, some of it has a place. Some of it has value. More so than even the schlocky, new-agey shit. But this idea, this notion that there's no jazz that's fun. There's no jazz that's enjoyable, easy to listen to. You have to be so sophisticated and uh, demanding, like modern art. And there's plenty of jazz that's a simple piece. A simple piece of art you can look at and see, oh, that's a car in a field with a tree. And, a, and a, So much of it is beautiful and, and celebratory and fun. And that extrapolation of the two extremes either so unlistenable because it's got so little substance or so unlistenable because it's so self-introspective and self-indulgent and that there's nothing in the middle how do we get such a consensus in the public that that's what jazz is it's, it's, it's like you're trying to destroy it trying to disservice and where exactly that comes from it's hard to say you know I think politically there was m motive to destroy disco when Reagan came into power uh, because disco was bringing a communal s sexual relationship between blacks and whites and that was a threat to a lot of the power structure because that kind of interbreeding would bring a unity and a shared interest because now my children and my grandchildren are mixed so I now have to consider both sides of, the, of this coin and I just think there was a desire to kind of stop that and there's a lot of white Americans that are very uncomfortable about their daughters dating race you know but how they stopped disco dead in its tracks quite like they did and it was there was a bit of a, a burnout anyway which happens with any genre that becomes as popular as disco was but with jazz, it's tougher to kind of say what is leading this portrayal of jazz today. How are we only getting, and again, I'm not talking about music people. I'm not talking about jazz music fans. I'm talking about the common person who, when you mention the word jazz, and they'd say this. They turn their nose up. They, 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 they shudder. They shrink at the sound or the sight of what they perceive jazz is going to be. And it makes them uncomfortable and, and queasy. How the F have we gotten to that place when 90% of the body of real jazz is incredibly approachable and listenable? This is Mobley. This is Mobley with Art Farmer, Pepper Adams, Sonny Clark, Paul Chambers, and Philly Joe Jones. There's nothing about this the schlocky, schmaltzy, new agey, unlistenable, shrieking, dissonant, it's melodic blues. And the honesty of a guy 
pouring his soul into a saxophone outweighs any set of lyrics at any point in time. Lyrics are phony. They portray uh, an image that someone's trying to portray. They set up an unreal reality for you to kind of digest. A guy speaking to his horn, if you have the empathy to hear and just feel what this guy's telling you, where he's coming from, there's no illusion. There's no pretend. I can only express from my soul the real insides of me. It's the most redeeming, honest, refreshing, delightful form of music that I know of. And I try to listen out and branch out to other things, things I haven't listened to in a long time. It only takes me an hour of listening to rock or reggae or hip hop before I'm like, oh, this is so static. This is so stale. The same four bars over and over again. Uh, the basic three chords of the average rock or pop song. It becomes really anemic and doesn't stimulate. And it doesn't have to be this avant garde opus that will scare 90% of the people in the room for it to be magnanimous and, and have value and to be super interesting. Just the fact that the drummer, the piano player, and the bass player are laying down tracks, but they're not making any four beats to any measure. They're never all going to be the same. It's going to have intricacy and tempo and dynamic, and it's going to bring up to crescendos and diminuendos. The live capability of a real jazz rhythm section is incredibly energetic and filled with the humanity. And then the soloers who are improvising and emoting on top are speaking from such a genuine, real place. Why does the common perception exist that jazz is sterile and boring or unlistenable? And I'm going to leave it at that today. It's going to be just a little quick episode, in and out. But I want you all to give me your thoughts. Because as a DJ, I know for a fact, most people shrink at the sound of, oh, I'm going to play some jazz today. They're like, ah, no, why? And yet they come up to me later and be like, man, that was some of the coolest jazz I've ever heard. How come I've never heard of this? And I can't answer that question. I can't for the life of me understand how such a small representation of this music has come to represent the majority of this music in the public's mind's eye. And I can't stand it. I've been trying for a year on this channel to try to combat that. Of course, my channel is but a ripple in a huge ocean of listeners and audience. So I just wish that more people would express the value in good, strong, middle of the road. It doesn't have to be innovative. It doesn't have to be difficult or complicated. If it brings a smile to you, it makes you tap your foot. That's jazz. That's jazz. And there's a reason why avant-garde and fusion and new thing, all those things got names because they weren't really what the old thing used to be. So we had to rename it something. And so these peripheral things aren't even really called jazz to jazz jazzophiles. Yet to the common non-jazz listener, that's the notion they get in their head. Some guy that's going to be on a saxophone making my ears want to come off of my head. Why? How do we get there? That music was never popular enough for it to ever creep into the common consciousness. And I've seen a few movies where they'll have a jazz scene and there'll be some guy doing uh, Lost Highway. David Lynch comes to mind uh, where there's a saxophone and it's, it's, it's excruciating in a way of the Bill Pullman characters playing some pretty out there stuff. But again, Lynch films are out there to begin with. So that's not a bad setting for the avant-garde. But for, how did the average, how did my brother Paul, who doesn't like jazz, know that jazz is that? And the, and the elevator music thing, you get that, you used to get that shopping in the malls and stuff. And, and you know, for middle-aged people, you remember a lot of easy listening jazz radio that was just kind of that schmaltzy, uh, the groove had been taken from it. The pulse had been removed. It was just inanimate and sterile and an unwelcome horizon of just sterility. Uh, in some ways, some of those CTI covers captured that sterile sound pretty well with the upside down pyramid and the sphere and the cylinder. That's kind of the sterility 
that a lot of 70s and 80s jazz achieves and ascends to. And what an awful place. And not there's a big chunk of the CTI library that's a lot more vital and full of challenging, wonderful, propulsed sounds. But uh, I like to hear people's thoughts. Why do you think we have those two preconceptions and notions in people's minds? Why do people think it's sterile and new age? And why do the people think it's all avant-garde and unlistenable? And where what happened to all that middle of the road? It's a bit like if the average person thought the only rock and roll that existed ever was Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention, which can be unlistenable at times, or the Carpenters. Real, real soft commercial, easy listening, you know, and that's not even the best example because the Carpenters make some good songs and I actually enjoy some of those Mothers of Invention records quite a lot. They're probably more enjoyable for me to listen to than Coltrane's Ascension. Maybe a better parallel would have been the unfinished volumes one, two, and three by John Lennon with Yoko Ono at times, the wedding album and uh, the one with their naked on the cover. Those are unlistenable. Live piece in Toronto, side two, unlistenable. Cacophonic Yoko shrieking into a microphone. If that was our perception of what rock and roll was, and I'm trying to advertise it to people, go, hey, you get excited about rock and roll. It's either going to be shrieking Yoko or the most Pablo-esque, watered down, diluted, milky, no substance rock and roll ever. And you never knew about Led Zeppelin. You never knew about the Rolling Stones. You never heard Queen or The Who. You'd be like, rock and roll ain't for me. I'm good. But rock and roll has all this center to it. That's the meat and the body of the music and the periphery doesn't represent the body. And yet in jazz, the periphery has become the perception. So think about it. Give me your comments on what you think is driving that, what's behind that, how do we change that? And when you came to jazz, did you have those notions yourself? I know I certainly thought jazz was gonna be very numerical and complicated and complex all the time and or that it was going to be easy listening I, I, I didn't that was even part of my perception coming into jazz 15 20 years ago and i've come to discover this entire body of music that's forgotten and the blue note library is kind of really coming to the fore and it's, it's very driven propulsed and accessible to most people especially you know 56 through 62 they start getting a little more out there a little later on and like even some of the Wayne Shorter stuff uh, some of the Hancock stuff it's a little much for the average person some of that but most of that hard driving hard bop hard Blakey stuff anybody can get into most of that stuff Mullen's gonna feel good to most anybody so give me your thoughts appreciate you all stay safe out there